Hey, it's Bobby. I got a request to show an overview of my no oxygen transfer from my Furmonster fermenters into kegs. And I thought um, I'm in the middle of doing that. So I thought I would uh, show off the process. So this is the Furmonster that we're going to be transferring. Um, it's got a solid lid modified with uh, a gas and liquid ball lock weldless bulkhead and the liquid one has a floating dip tube so we could do a nice clean transfer um, without opening this up and using an auto siphon for example so this has been um, slightly pressurized to about three psi for a day or two and uh, it's been um, soft crashed well not soft crashed but it's at about 45 degrees right now so it's nice and clear and you can see there's really nothing going on right here so it's time to move this into the keg all right so i got the fur monster moved someplace here and then i'm going to put my keg down here so i like to have a little bit of a gravity assist although you could put about two two and a half three psi maybe max in here i don't want to rely on just pressure to kind of move this horizontally or even uphill so I like to get a little bit of gravity assist on this. And then the next thing I do is I do the full star sand purge of my uh, recipient keg here. So we're just going to fill this up with wa uh, cold water. And when I get this just about to the top, I'm going to put my half ounce of, this is a 2.5 gallon keg. So I'm going to put half an ounce of star sand in there. And then I'm going to uh, put the lid on and I'm going to agitate roll this thing around so that I can mix the star sand in. All right, that's filled with about a quarter inch left to go. I got a half an ounce of star sand in the reservoir. And then we're going to put the lid on uh, and then we're going to just roll this around a bit to agitate and get the star sand mixed up. All right, do this for about 60 seconds, maybe give it another 60 seconds of soak time, and then we move on to the next step. All right, the next step is to take, I have a jumper hose, it's, I got a black to black, and then I'm gonna put this uh, free-flowing connector on the end to open up the poppet on this side, and then I'll show you what's next. Okay, next we're going to take the out port of the keg, because it's filled with star sand, we want to dispense that out of there. And then we're going to take our CO2 regulator, set it to about 5 psi, and then we're going to take the gas side and go to the input. So basically we're just setting this up in the normal dispensing uh, configuration, and we're just running the star sand off into this bucket right here. And you can turn the pressure up if you want to make it move faster. And we want about 10 PSI. And then you want to stand here and not walk away because once this uh, is all dispensed, you know, it'll just be shooting out CO2 and uh, you'll be wasting a lot of it. So, um, you know, right now the whole purpose is to displace all of the star sand that's in here so that it's 100% filled with CO2. And that is a level of oxygen avoidance that you cannot do just by pressurizing and venting this with CO2 because air is always going to be mixed in and it takes something like 20 to 30 purge cycles to get that to a pure CO2 environment if you don't do the liquid displacement method. Okay, you can see the keg is empty now. connect everything just to make sure you don't make any mistakes and put the keg up here next to the fermenter again gravity assist then I'm going to take this bucket of star sand put it right here and I like to use a gray gas connector with a piece of hose on it that goes into this bucket of star sand and you snap it onto the end now all that pressure is going to vent so that you don't blow CO2 into your fermenter and stir everything up. That's one of the main pitfalls that you can uh, succumb to and you don't want to do that. So now all the pressure in here is vented because I have like this blow off 
And the next thing we're going to do is hook up the liquid. Um, so this is the end that does not have the free flowing piece in there. I'm going to pop that onto the liquid post that has the floating dip tube. And now you can see it's already flowing, so that's purged out. So I had to put you down for a second to grab my other hand so I could pull that out. Now, that would have been a good thing to just drain into a dump bucket so that you can clear out any uh, yeast or any other sediment that might have been in the floating dip tube. I noticed that it was coming out clean and I didn't have a second set of hands to hold the camera, so I couldn't show you that. But um, basically you can kind of see that the, uh, the beer is nice and clean inside the hose. It was coming out clean. Uh, but you might have want to uh, purge, you know, maybe a pint of the the dirtiest beer out of that floating dip tube first and now it's time to just pop this on to the keg uh, before I do that I'm just gonna uh, put the co2 feed on here I'm just gonna adjust my pressure down I like to go uh, you know 0 to 1 psi somewhere like that where it barely moves and then we hook it up you got to be really careful with these. You don't want to explode it. So I'd rather come up to another half a PSI or so. I'm going to snap this down. And now we have connection between here and here. And you can see immediately that the keg is filling because it's venting CO2 out right now. Now there's a lot of different ways you can do this. A lot of people will just um, open up this vent and turn it 90 degrees to lock it in the open position. The outrushing CO2 will likely keep any oxygen or air from going back in there while you're filling. But I don't like the possibility of like walking away from this and potentially leaving this uh, to dump. If this thing fills up with beer to the very top, it's just going to be dumping beer all over the place. At least in this configuration, I've got like a gallon and a half of headspace in this bucket. If I were to make a terrible error, walk away and get distracted at least the beer will be collected in the bucket, although I'll be losing it. Um, it's still not a total tragedy, but I like having this blow off because I can see sort of a visual indication that it's currently filling and that uh, maybe my pressure going into the, the, the fermenter has not gotten too low. As long as I can hear the bubbling and see this happening, I know that beer is moving. And you could watch this level go down slowly, but it's really slow enough that you're not going to notice it too easily. All right, so the other thing is, uh, before we connected this to the keg and removed that free-flowing fitting, that was also a good opportunity to fill a little sample cup if you wanted to taste this beer at this point or take a final gravity. Uh, that's often what I do, but I had stolen a sample of this beer just yesterday and took the gravity, so... I didn't need to grab that. I know what it tastes like. Uh, it's just time to keg it. So uh, the other thing I do is I just watch for this, uh, for the beer to come out of this vent line. As soon as I see beer in here, I know the keg is full and I'll just pop the liquid connector off of there to stop the flow. And uh, other than that, I just kind of watch the floating dip tube and make sure that I'm not about to pick up a bunch of sediment. Uh, you can also just watch the clarity of the beer in the hose and know when to stop but um that's pretty much it this is how you get total oxygen free transfers into your kegs another question i get often is uh, after i describe this process is what if you were filling two consecutive kegs uh, often this would have been a seven gallon for a monster and i'd be filling two of these two and a halves one to bring home and one to keep at the shop and if that were the case i would just um uh, purge both of them separately and then once this beer started coming out of this blow off I disconnect this and then move it over to the second keg and continue filling I hope that was helpful and I hope it encourages you to set up an oxygen free transfer for your next beer